everybody comic crack. San Quentin Kings is a game finally had a chance to play a week or so ago. I've had it in my collection for quite a long time. It was the, if you know anything about the games I'm into and watch the channel and had any interest in the games whatsoever, uh, Nate Hayden is one of my favorite kind of designers, him and his group of uh, friends. Blast City Games and now Emperors of Eternal Evil, I believe. And I've got quite a few of their games. But this one was the first one that he created. And it was, does it say on the side what year? Maybe it says on the back. I want to say early 2000s, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Oh, 2007. There we go. Um, I was lucky enough to find a copy on Board Game Geek from a guy in Greece. And uh, after a couple of dollars on shipping, it was in my grubby little hands. Um, so we, we played it and I just wanted to go through today kind of what the game looks like and how it's played. Um, I won't do a kind of gameplay video like I've done before. This is more of a instructional kind of look at the game. Um, I see that on BGG there's no video for it so I wanted to kind of contribute that way as well too. Uh, in other news right now, uh, speaking of Cave Evil and Nate, there's uh, the expansion has kind of been officially uh, announced. So I'll try to leave a link in this video to where you can go and read about the new. It's a standalone game, but it can also be played as an expansion to Cave Evil. But the good thing that they have uh, about at the next series of games in that kind of world is that you don't need to own Cave Evil to play these these other games that they have coming out. Um, their plan is to really dive into this whole Cave Evil world and kind of keep going from there, using that as kind of a jumping off point. Um, the other thing that he said in kind of write-ups that I've read is that it's the kind of game that you can play a light version that'll take you like a half an hour, or you can play a real heavy version that'll take you like 12, 13, 14, 15 hours. You can really, you can set whatever kind of pace uh, or difficulty level rather that you want to. So I'll leave a link, read about it. They're doing a fundraising campaign right now. You can pre-order the game through his site. Uh, there's a couple of incentives like long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, bandanas, that sort of thing. If you want to go that route or you can just purchase the game on its own. Uh, and I believe the game on its own is $35 US possibly. I can't remember. Uh, you'd have to check on the website. So let's take a look at Nate's first game here, San Quentin Kings. Here's a look at the game board that everything takes place on, um, kind of made on a, a little bit of a flimsier piece of uh, cardboard, which I, I love. Um, mine had quite a bit of a curl in it, so I managed to flatten it out quite a bit. Um, I like the idea that it's on this kind of crummier cardstock, and I use that term loosely. Um, just kind of adds to the whole idea of this being a game in prison. The object of the game is everybody has their own cell. Each player has their own cell filled with uh, different colored uh, cubes. This is just the green to have a look at. And in that cell is basically your gang. Um, they're represented by different cubes and cylinders. So the big uh, cylindrical one here represents the Cobra gang. They're kind of the muscle. This one here represents the Scorpion uh, gang member. Um, they're kind of the workers, uh, average strength gang member with good working abilities. And then the tarantulas are represented by the small cube. Uh, they're physically weak, but they've got good business sense, uh, the, the smarts, the brains of the operation. So at the beginning of the game, everybody gets some gang members in their cell. Whatever's left over goes in a pool at another spot on the table, and that's kind of the um, the pool that you can draw from. It's it's basically people. It represents gang members that are still awaiting trial. <clears throat> Those will come into play 
eventually as the game goes on. Um, it takes place over three years, marked by this track right here. Um, and at the end of the three years, there's a big prison riot where everybody fights everybody. Um, the object is, this is kind of the, the respect track going around the outside here. The person with the most respect at the end of the game is the ultimate kind of uh, uh, victor of the prison. You can gain respect by a number of things, um, having gang members in solitary confinement. Um, you can buy respect points in this little room here and over here as well. Um, at the end of the game, the person who has the most, there's three different types of drugs that you can have in your hand. You can earn respect for having the most of a kind of drug. Uh, let's have a look on here. Uh, this right here is the fight track. Every time there's a fight in one of these different rooms, um, you, you bump up a marker on this track. Whoever has the most on this track wins some respect as well. Uh, there's crew kings, so whoever has the most cobras at the end of the game, whoever has the most scorpions, whoever has the most tarantula, you get five points of respect for each of those. Uh, most commissary cubes, uh, commissary cubes obviously for buying cigarettes and food and that sort of thing. Um, and then most shank cards, I believe, at the end, you get some respect as well. And then however many bribe chips you have left over. So, many, 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 many ways that you can get respect. So how do you go through, how do you move through the game? Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rooms. This one isn't considered that, that's a separate thing. These seven rooms that you see here um, are where different events are going to take place throughout the, the year that you're in. Um, so the start of the game, you're in year one, you play all seven rooms, it ends the year, you move to year two, you play all seven rooms, move to year three, play all seven rooms, and then you riot. There's a token right here with a crown on it that gets passed to whoever's going to start off year one. Whoever's turn it is at that moment uh, gets to choose which room or which event happens next. Uh, once that, if this room is chosen, once that event occurs and is followed through to completion, it moves to the next player, they get to choose a room. Once they're done, the next person gets to choose a room, depending on how many players you have. Uh, once you've played a room in a given year, you can't go back, um, so you can't play the commissary room twice. Uh, each room has a different object to it. The ones that have a little fist here are fighting rooms where you fight against the other players. Uh, these rooms here are just rooms where you can purchase things. Uh, maybe we'll start with, well, we'll start up at the top here. So this is the shank room. Uh, these are the shank cards. <coughs> and that's kind of what they look like. Uh, each card represents a, they'll have a picture of a different gang member and it uh, just adds to your fight hand. The way that that works is when you're in a room everybody decides whether or not they're going to fight. Some rooms have a cost to participate in them. This one, for example, the drug room, it's going to cost you one commissary cube or one shank card to participate in this fight. Um, to participate in here, it's going to cost you two commissary cubes, two shank cards, or two drugs to participate in this room there. Um, this one does not have a cost, so Nothing ever says that you have to fight. If you want to pass, you can completely pass. Uh, if you do, though, you don't get any of the rewards that come with it, but you also don't get any of the penalties that might come with these rooms, which is using your gang pieces, really. 
the end of the fight rounds that are broken down into three rounds, you determine who the winner is, and that winner goes up. I think it's two on the fight track, or is it one on the fight track? I can't remember. I believe maybe it's one. Um, and that kind of goes towards your end goal again of getting these respect points. There's also other bonuses for each room in this one. Um, for example, the, the winner gets two shank cards added to their hand. The winner of this one gets a couple of commissary cubes. Uh, the winner of this one gets to pick three new gang members from that kind of pool that I was telling you about before. The winner of this one gets some drugs. <clears throat> All things that can kind of help you throughout the game and then at the end of the game. Uh, on the side of each of these fight ones, you'll see a red rectangle with uh, different shapes in different orders. That's, that represents who has the most, uh, or who's going to win the round based on the cubes and cards that they play in combination. So at the end of three rounds, whoever has the most scorpion members, which again are these uh, larger cubes here at the end of the three rounds, is going to win. Uh, if nobody has any of those, it's, it go, goes down to the next one. Whoever has the most tarantula members. If nobody has either of those, whoever has the most cobra members. This also works as if there's a tie. If two players have three scorpion members each, then you, also, then you go down to the tarantula member and see who has the most of that to break the tie. Um, how do you participate in a fight? You have a pool of pieces uh, alongside you. Um, I believe it's three of each type of gang member to start off the game. You secretly pick uh, whichever, however many gang members you want to use. You can use one, you can use two, you can use all of them if you want. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. It's up to you. Everybody holds their fist closed in uh, the middle of the game. Uh, count of three, you open them up and reveal which gang members you're going to have participating in this fight. Um, you lay them out. I usually lay them out in accordance to uh, the tiebreaker. So again, if, if we're playing this shank room, this is how I would lay them out. You have a card that you start off the game with as well. You have a shank card that's in your hand that you start out the game with. You can use that to add to your um, to your basic fight. So what happens is starting with the player to the left of whoever chose this room, you have to play in round one of the fight, you have to play one card and you have to, and it can be a card from the fight deck or a card from the shank deck. Um, round two, if you're participating in the fight, you have to pick one card and play it again. Round three, if you're still participating, you have to play two cards. It can be two from here, two from here, one from each. Um, and all of those times always include cards that are in your hands. The shank cards are safer. Uh, each shank card in this pile is a gang member and it will represent one or two. I think there was twos in here as well. Let's just have a quick look here to see. Uh, no, maybe it's just ones in this one. Yeah, it's just ones. Each card will represent one gang member that you add to the fight. Uh, let's find our scorpion member. When it comes to gameplay, when you play a card in this room again, for example, it's the whoever has the most scorpion members at the end of the fight is going to be the winner. If I have a scorpion member in my hand, I might want to play that one as the card that I play for one of these rounds, just because I know that it's a guaranteed extra member in that fight that I'm going to have, as opposed to the blind draw of whatever this next card is. In this case, it was another scorpion member. Um, you do three rounds, your hand will end up looking 
something possibly like this. Let's have a... By the end of the three rounds, your hand will look something like this. Um, not exactly. And then that's when you add up the totals. So in this instance, I have three scorpion members, two tarantula and two cobra. And again, referring back to our little chart here, whoever has the most scorpion members is the winner. Um, if three was more than anybody else, then I would win this particular room. Um, the fight deck is a little riskier. There are cards that have gang members on it, like this. Um, and this one has some where there's a two, where it represents two gang members. But there's things like this, for example, if you draw a guard, one of your cubes that are in this fight uh, moves to solitary, confi solitary confinement and is kind of out of this round of the fight. At the end of the year, whoever has the most, is it at the end of the year or at the end of the fight, whoever has the most members in solitary confinement is considered the craziest gang and they, they get some respect on the respect track because they've had a lot of people go into solitaire. When your cubes go into solitary confinement, that doesn't mean that they're out of the game. There are cards, however, that uh, that could happen to you where you're... Uh, there's a, an example of a two. So it has two cubes at the top there. So this would count as two tarantula members. And you can see they have, or maybe you can't, they have tattoos on them representing their gang as well. Um, rest in peace. If you drew this card, there's a couple of things that happen with this card. One of your gang members, it's again, it's the player's choice. One of your gang members is completely out of the game. Uh, he's been killed in prison. He's done. He's no longer part of your cell. He's no longer a part of the game. You completely lose that guy. When this card is drawn, the other thing that happens is at the end of whatever round you happen to be in, uh, sorry, no, at the end of whatever room you happen to be in, whatever room you're kind of fighting in, um, you shuffle the, the fight deck back up again, including this card back into it, um, and kind of start with a fresh deck. There's cards like this, steal a shank card, where you can play that and steal another player's shank card for your hand, which then you can play immediately if you want, or you can hold on to it till another turn. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. There's uh, parole. Uh, one of your gang members has been paroled. Again, he's out of the game, but he goes back into the pool. Um, and then you get, I think it's two commissary cubes when he leaves because it kind of represents the idea that he, even though he's out, he's still kind of, he's still looking out for his uh, brothers in jail and he sends them some food or sends them some contraband. Uh, what else do we have here? More guard cards. More guards. More prisoners. Um, ste this one represents stealing somebody's drugs. If you draw this card, you pick up uh, one type of drug from another player and add it to your pot, add it to your hand. And I believe that's pretty much it for those. Grave cards, shank cards, pearl cards, steel drug. Yeah, that's, that's all the different types of cards in the kind of base game that you use. So again, it's just playing hand after hand and room after room, seeing who's winning fights. At the end of, let's clear all this out of here. Let's say that this is the end of this particular shank room section. We've had the fight. Somebody's won, somebody's lost. All the points and prizes have been given. You put the pieces that you used in that fight into the yard. Through each of the rooms, after every, after every room, you, you do this. At the end of the year, so once all seven rooms have been played and you move to the next year, you get all of these pieces back into your uh, cell and you start game or you start year two all over again. 
So and that's the biggest thing to keep in mind that for each fight, uh, you want to utilize a mix of cubes and cards as best as you can because if you kind of overcompensate with some of the cubes, that's just more and it's early on in the game or it's early on in the year, that's just less cubes you're going to have for next rooms coming up or to upgrade pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. What else can I tell you about that? So, like I said, this one is to get some commissary cubes. This one at the end, the first player gets to pick three of these gang members to add to their cell. Um, so if you're, you happen to be the winner, you get to pick any three. You put a disc on it, on these spaces covering them up. If you came in second, you get to pick two. And if you came in third, you get whatever's left over. When you recruit new gang members that are coming in on the bus, this represents them coming fresh to jail. As soon as you win them, they don't go right into your cell, they go into the yard and then they can be used the following year. Um, again, this one is to win drugs. Um, now for these rooms here, there it's a bit of a different story. These ones aren't fight action ones. These are kind of purchasing and um, upgrading type of room. So this is the gym. Um, in turn, starting with the player who chose the room, you get to upgrade one of your prisoners. Let's say I had uh, the scorpion member. I could put the scorpion member basically in the room and upgrade it to a cobra member. So from that pool that's over here off the side, I would take a scorpion member and put it into uh, the yard. Um, if I had a scorpion member, I could trade him in for one respect point so it would move my piece up on the respect track but I would lose this guy. He would go back into the pool, basically, to be drawn a later, at a later time. Uh, this is kind of the, the cafeteria where you can make deals, you can buy things. Uh, three drug tokens are placed in front of the board, face up. Three shank cards are placed in front of the board, face up and you can buy one item each and it costs you uh, one cube to participate. For example, you can buy two respect points. Uh, you can buy one respect point or one respect point or one of the shank cards or one of the different type of drug or one um, new gang member to put into your cell. Uh, once one of the items is chosen, it's unavailable to somebody else, so if I'm the first player and I choose two respect, the next player can't come and choose two respect as well. It's he gets to choose from whatever's left over. <clears throat> and then finally, the guard section of the game. This is where you can buy bribe chips, which are those blue ones there. You you can use bribe chips for a number of things. Where did I put that card now? Here's another one over here. You can use them for a number of different things. Uh, during a fight, for example, you can play a bribe chip to redraw one fight card. So if you chose, say, something that had a bad effect on you, you could play one of your bribe chips to choose another fight card in hopes that uh, you get a better draw the second time. Um, you can add one fight round, which is again, like I said, each room is three fight rounds. Uh, it'll allow you to go into a fourth round to try to win. Um, you can bribe one opponent's gang piece. Um, so that basically means that you can steal from somebody else who's in the fight, you can steal one of their gang members and put it into your hand for that round. Once that fight round is done though and they go back into the yard, they become the original owner's gang member again. Uh, use one gang piece from solitary, so you can take one of your gang pieces out of solitary. 
uh, steal one opponent's shank, drug, or commissary cube. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then finally is kill one opponent's piece. Um, so you can play it and kill one of their pieces, which again takes it completely out of the game. No chance of it going back into the pool and getting drawn again. So there you have it. That's at the end. Okay, so at the end of the three rounds or the three years, sorry, at the end of the three years, we move into the riot phase. At that point, all of the pieces that you have in your hand or in your cell, rather, participate in the fight. You don't have to choose a certain amount and reveal them. Every single piece enters a big, big fight against everybody else. The fight is uh, orchestrated the same way that any other fight is. You have three fight rounds where you play cards during each of the rounds. In this case, this is the track to decide who's the winner. The ultimate winner is whoever has the most Cobra pieces. If there's a tie, you see who has the most Scorpions, etc. <laughs> um, and that's where kind of things get really serious because it's your last chance to uh, just win some respect. It's your last chance to maybe kill off uh, using your guard bribe actions, maybe kill off some of your opposing opponents' um, uh, pieces and gang members and get them out of the game to kind of assure your victory. And like I said, then using all these scoring methods on the back side of this card, um, determine who the winner is, who has the most respect. So there you have it, that's uh, San Quentin Kings. The other thing that I have, which maybe I'll talk about in a later video, we haven't played it yet. Um, this is the San Quentin Kings expansion, and it's called Folsom Blood. It just gives you a whole bunch of new cards. There's a new room, uh, a hospital that uh, takes place in the expansion as well. Um, and there's a whole set of rules in with that. But uh, like I said, we haven't dug into that one yet. We've just managed to finally sit down and play this for the first time. Um, but I, I love it. I, I'm really glad that I found it. It's, it's a great thing. Uh, just as in comics when you're digging into back issues and seeing how a particular creative person or a creative team has started out. It's the same with this. I really like this taste of uh, what brought Nate into gaming to begin with. Um, it's a solid game. We had a real fun time playing it. It was me, my wife, and my son, and my son ended up winning by one point by the end of it. I think he was had 35 respect points by the end of it. And he was really excited to be the person that won the very first time we played this. So there you have it, San Quentin Kings. Uh, not an easy one to find. There's been talk on uh, Board Game Geek that there's going to be a print and play made available at some point. Um, and that basically is exactly what it sounds like. All the files to make your own version of the game will be sold to you. Uh, there's sites where you can buy these cubes and basically make your own version of the game to play. Um, yeah, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.